Hey, how's it going guys? It's Andy again. Uh, today, what I'm going to go over with you guys is how to um, plumb bob your reticle, the ver vertical um, crosshair of your reticle in relation to the center of the line axis of the board. I'm going to show you the tools that I use to get the job done. <clears throat> and so, I'll also explain some of the processes that other people go through to try to level their crosshairs, which is not correct. Uh, I'm going to actually go over that with you first, um, and then I'll go ahead and go through the process that I go through. Uh, a lot of people will like to take a uh, bubble level and place it on the top of their uh, um, elevation turret. And um, <clears throat> they also like to take another bubble level and put it on, say, like the uh, Picatinny rail on their, uh, uh, their action or their receiver. And uh, you know, level it up that way to get their scope, you know, rings loose, and they, you know, essentially will uh, try to match the bubble level. So that's not the proper way to do it. Uh, the proper way to do it is to essentially have a uh, what they call a plumb bob system, okay, for uh, um, getting that uh, reticle perfect in relation to Earth's gravitational pull, because that's what's going to matter the most. Um, so. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, first off, I will take my uh, uh, torque wrench and inch pounds. Always make sure you use the inch pounds, not foot pounds. Um, take that, go ahead and uh, you know loosen up your scope rings. And uh, essentially what you'll do is, uh, back here, the reason I'm in my bathroom right now, the reason why I'm in here is because I want to make sure that I have a nice dark area so that I can um, see the uh, projected... Um, uh, crosshairs when I shine a flashlight in the back side of the uh, the bell of the uh, scope um, I, it'll be able to cast the shadow of the crosshairs on a uh, blank wall with a uh, string and a weight at the bottom of it. Um, I don't know if you can see this back here but back here I've got a uh, plumb bob system. I've got a little weight back here on the very bottom and then if you can see the little string that's laid um, that's uh, tied to the the weight itself. I've got a piece of tape up here that's taping the uh, string uh, to the top so that I can have the uh, uh, system set up so whenever I cast that shadow from the uh, crosshairs on the uh, blank wall I'll be able to uh, match them up. So, alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you real fast. Alright, get this uh, around here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rifle So what I use is a little, uh, little foam thing my, use, my wife uses for working out. And I just set my rifle up here just like that. Okay. Um, like I said, I make sure that my scope rings are, you know, loose. Um, so that I can twist my scope around um, to uh, match that plumb bob when, this, uh, when, I, when I get ready for it. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do... And I'm going to try to show you guys this the best that I can. So you'll just take your flashlight. Okay, it's a little surefire flashlight. Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, the light off here. And I'm going to show you guys to turn this on. And what you're going to do is you know, try to get this thing centered up as, as best as possible in relation to the uh, plumb bob and get your reticle as close as possible. Okay, so that's the first process right there. So I'm going to turn the light back on. Now, what you also want to do is um, my particular chassis system. I have a bubble level already in, uh, installed into the, uh, uh, the, the system here, the, uh, the chassis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that bubble level as, as level as possible, okay? So... Um, Right now, I can see that me my uh, bubble level is pretty daggone level as it is right now. Maybe just a little bit over to the left. Okay. All right. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lock down my um, lever here for my um, Harris bipod. All right. So I've got it all locked into place. It's good to go. Okay, and like I said, my scope caps are loose, so I can wiggle my scope around. Now, I'm not going to adjust my bubble level. My bubble level, I shouldn't need to adjust it because um, uh, it was set up pri previously on a different chassis system that had, a, had an HS Precision chassis. 
or a stock in. Um, so it should be good, but I might have to adjust it, but we'll see. All right, so now that the gun is uh, completely level, um, uh, we can go ahead and get set up. All right, so I'll go ahead and set the camera back over here. Excuse the mess. My wife, uh, if you have a wife or a girlfriend, you could probably understand why there's such a mess in the bathroom. Um, don't tell her I said that. None of that is uh, my stuff up there, so excuse the mess. All right, so here we go. Uh, where's my flashlight? All right. So we'll go ahead and turn the light off. I'll get my flashlight turned on here. And uh, actually, you know, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up close to the, uh, uh, the plumb bob system so you guys can get a better view of that. Okay, so I'm going to be out of the frame here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the light off. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, now I've got, like I said, I've got my, uh, my, or my um, chassis level. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and scoot the crosshair and scope without bumping the uh, level of the rifle at all. Um, now what I'm doing right now is I'm adjusting the parallax so that I can get better clarity. Okay. So let's see. All right. So that looks good right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, scope and I'm going to rotate it to where the lines match up. And it looks like there is a spider on the wall dancing. It's kind of weird. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, okay, so now that I have everything set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that straight just like that. I'm going to try to walk down while the scope is and uh, the, uh, uh, the flashlight is on the uh, scope. Or I'm sorry, the uh, chassis just laying there. I'm going to look at the, uh, the lines and see if they match up all the way down. Okay, I see that they're really, really close. It might need to go over just a tad bit. All right, try not to bump anything here. All right, and go over just a little bit. Get that straight. Okay, I'll take another good little quick look. Get down here. Okay, it's matched up there. It's matched up at the very bottom. So I'm looking at the hash marks here. I'm going to try to get you a little bit closer so you can see. Uh, okay, so the hash marks, um, the one MOA, actually there are two MOA hash marks, are lining up with that line. And they look pretty daggone uh, close all the way down to the very bottom. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but everything is all pretty much matched up. Okay, I'm going to turn the light back on. We'll switch it around. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the level of the gun. Make sure that that's perfectly level again. There goes my flashlight. And then we're going to go ahead and check it one last time. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to set my uh, flashlight back up there. Then we're going to go ahead and turn the light off one last, last time. We're going to take one last double check to ensure that we got a good level scope. Everything is matching up perfectly. Okay, now that everything is all lined up, and I am confident that the, uh, the vertical crosshairs are perfect, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to adjust this camera down so you guys can see it. Sorry about the crappy camera job. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my torque wrench, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the uh, the bit off and I'm going to go ahead and just start loosely hand tighten it down to where it gets snug. And I'm going to do it in a star pattern. I don't you don't ever want to just crank one screw down and uh, you know get it as tight as possible. You want to do it like a star pattern, okay? Oops, so let's get this uh, turned around here, okay? All right, so get those hand tight. 
So that kind of locks everything in and keeps that setting so that uh, uh, you don't shift the uh, scope around. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to check our bubble level. Bubble level is pretty dag on perfect. Okay, all right. Now we're going to check this one last time. All right, so the uh, bubble level on the chassis. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, that's perfect too. All right, so now all that's left to do is I'm going to turn this off. I always like to double check everything. So uh, now, now what we're going to do is just like we did before with hand tighten, we're going to do a star pattern. I like to go a little bit at a time on each one of the uh, screws and a star pattern, just like that. Um, get all those screws about the same tightness. Uh, it's all kind of like a feel type thing. So get them, uh, get them snug um, before you go ahead and start cranking down on them. Okay, and I incrementally kind of use it by, do it by feel. I go a little bit at a time on each one of the screws, get them tighter and tighter as I go, about the same tightness of the feel. You know, I'll kind of go a little bit harder with that one, okay? All right, and then what we're gonna do is, after this set, we should be able to go ahead and crank them all the way down, so. All right, see that one already broke, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and Torque these down. Um, now the thing with uh, scope rings is you don't want to over tighten these scope rings because if you do, you can actually damage the uh, the body of the scope itself, and you can um, put too much force on those erectors and internals of the scope, and you don't want that to happen because you want your scope to be able to function like it's supposed to. Um, if you get too much pressure on that scope body, it can, you know, essentially distort and crush those uh, internals. You don't want to do that. So, okay. And we're almost done here. I always like to do a double click on each one of the screws to ensure that I have a good lock. And once you get that set up, you are good to go. All right. All right, cool. I hope this, uh, I hope this video was instructional. I'm sorry about the crappy camera job. Um, uh, let me know what you think. Um, uh, if you would, you know, put a thumbs up and a like on my page uh, or my channel. Um, look forward to any comments that you guys have. Uh, if you guys need any help, um, I don't know if you guys would like to email me, but my email address is as follows. It's all lowercase and it is as follows, aepperson88 at yahoo.com. All right, thanks for watching.